Vipper TV presents Southtown Comedy Club Radio with Roy Lopez Jr. Hey folks, this is Roy Lopez Jr. with Southtown Comedy Radio Show. And uh, I just want to say hi to everybody out there. Thank you for listening. Before we get started today, I want to give out a couple of announcements. Uh, for instance, a lot of you folks out there know that I work for the uh, Alzheimer's Association. And this coming March the 28th, I want you, if you get a chance, come on out to visit uh, uh, visit with us. We're going to have a Blondes versus Brunettes flag football game. That's right, folks. 5 p.m. at the Toyota Stadium. So if you guys get a chance, come on out there. And, of course, the first weekend over at the Blue Star Brewery will be the first show for Southtown Comedy. And our headliner that day is going to be Mr. Dave May. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our guest today is Mr. Dave May. Howdy. Howdy. Hi. Hi. Glad to be here. What's going on, Dave? How you doing, man? Life is good. Uh, kicking back. Uh, a little cold, a little rainy, but, you know, hey, I just I just put an extra towelette under my arms and I'm fine. There you go. That works for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave is a very seasoned comic and he's performed. You know, I was reading your resume. I, I'm just amazed. When I see all these accomplishments, I mean, Showtime's Funniest Person in America, Comic Relief, Showtime, uh, Comedy Crusades for Diabetes, you've been the MC, you've been everywhere, you've worked with a lot of big names. That's an amazing resume. I, You know, I, as a kid, wanted to grow up to be a comedian. It was my dream. It was, I just, I memorized uh, all the songs like Snoopy and the Red Baron by the, the Royal uh, Airmen and uh, the Smothers Brothers songs. I would know them by heart. You know, a six-year-old kid, seven-year-old guy, oh, boom. And, and I just, I guess, I look back, I just love that laugh. So um, fortunately, when I got uh, to a point uh, where college wasn't an option anymore. Um, <laughs> I was on that eight-year bachelor plan, you know, bachelor degree yeah, plan. Yeah, I think a lot of us in that business uh, were in the same uh, program. Yeah, and uh, I got through about eight years, uh, six years, I mean, of eight years. and uh, But then I just discovered comedy was there, and I had not even ever seen a live comedy show. Are and you I, serious? And I had just started. Well, I'd seen it on TV. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you, 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 who did you watch when you were on TV? Was it Milton Berle? And- I... Uh, well, sure. I, I remember Sid Caesar and things like that, you know, watching reruns and stuff. But it was Alan King was the guy yeah, who yeah, just he, made me sit up and go, wow. Yeah, he was very funny. And one of the first ones, I, I think, uh, on TV, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, the guy is amazing. Yeah, Ed, the Ed Sullivan show, Sunday nights, man. That was, I saw so many things on that. I look back, you know, there was uh, Frank Gorshin, the, the Riddler, you know. Oh, yeah. He was yeah, actually a stand up yeah. impressionist. And uh, Nichols and May, who uh, Elaine May and Mike Nichols, Mike Nichols, who just passed on. Uh, great improv. So, and I, so, you know, I found comedy started real big there at the uh, end of the 80s. And yeah. I kind of just wandered into it. So. Well, you know, you've, you've and, and you know, just to mention a few, I was mentioning some of these names of the people that you worked with. Uh, I, I'm looking at them and I'm just, again, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, Bill Hicks, Tom Parks, Larry Miller, Ellen DeGeneres, yep. Steve Harvey. Ron Shaw, I wouldn't know. I see Weird Al Yankovic. How, how did he make this list? Well, I, I open <laughs> I open for Weird Al here in San Antonio over at the uh, Laurie Auditorium. Are you serious? On, uh, yeah, on um, what is it? Um, in Trinity University, and uh, wow, it was just there was two thousand people in the audience. Beautiful place. Walked out, opened it up, and uh, it was wonderful. And I and Weird Al backstage was just was great. You know, I, 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 and then of course we all do that. Now, what he has, and this is funny because I was, gonna, I meant to ask you that. Now, he made his living doing parodies of songs. So basically, he'd get a song that he liked and change the words. You were talking about how you used to sing these songs and everything. Did you ever do that? Did you ever like change the words and kind of make it your own song? Well, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Because well, first, and of course, another big uh, of my age, Mad Magazine, of course. Oh, of course, was a huge, Spy versus Spy. But you had those of uh, the songs. They were yeah. always they did all these songs where it was downtown, but it was. Uh, what was the classic? Oh, it was Ground Round. Ground Round. Ground Round instead of Downtown. So. Well, you know, we're changing it to Southtown now. South, you know. uh, South- <laughs> hey, 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 man. You know, it's going to work. It's going to work. Pachula, little Pachula Clark to bring you all down to the comedy <laughs> show. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo. There you go. Then we're going to listen to Lulu next. All right. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, Bill Hicks rode around for with me on a bunch of one nighters for almost two weeks. Really? And that was to see him in the car and see him. 
uh, one of the great lessons of comedy because Bill could be out there. Bill talked about some very esoteric stuff. A brilliant comedian. I saw him one night in Richmond, Kentucky, a college show, Eastern Kentucky University, and he is just eating it. I mean, ter- and then suddenly he starts doing one-liners and doing stuff like an open mic right, and right. won the audience back. Really? And then started doing Bill Hicks stuff again. And oh, it was just uh, amazing yeah. to see him work like that. So, yeah, uh, Ellen DeGeneres brought her down from us. Uh, Cincinnati to Louisville, uh, worked with her. Uh, she was actually the funniest person in America at that time. You know, I think she still is, to be honest with you. She is hilarious. I've watched her shows, and she's just a, she's just a darling. She was a nice, she's a very nice person. She, we stopped and ate. She insisted on buying a meal. You know, she was just very cool. Well, and, and, and as of my, most of the comedians, I, I'd say most of the comedians I've ever met or was introduced are, are, are the same way. They're very, I mean, they're, they're down to earth. You know, uh, a lot of people... You tell them that they're, you know, when somebody asks you what you do, you say, oh, I'm a, I'm a comedian. Hey, tell me a joke. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know? well, some of these people, hell, they'll, they'll, they'll sit right back down and you better be prepared, man. Well, they'll, yeah, they'll but the worst thing is you'll say something like this. You'll go, oh, you know, uh, well, I'm not on the clock right now. <laughs> exactly. And, and right. they laugh and then they go, no, tell me something. I just did. I just did. I'm <laughs> Hel- out, right? Hel- hey. Hello. I didn't sneak it at the drive-by what, or something. What's the famous one? Uh, hey, I don't go to your job and knock the mop out from your hands, right? <laughs> I love that one. I love that one. Uh, what are some of the other things you've done? I've seen that uh, you maybe you worked on some carnival cruises. That, that means you've got a chance to travel, huh? Oh, yeah. I got to go on cruise lines. Just go into Cozumel on a regular basis, jump on the plane, uh, go get that uh, quick search in Mexico. That was always fun. <laughs> that was why I did it, actually. And uh, uh, way before the NSA, that was uh, in the TSA. Um, but, yeah, c- cruise lines were uh, – going out in the cruises were fun. Um, you know – I got off the road a lot because uh, I'm not the kind, I'm not the kind of person who likes to wake up in a different hotel every night and stuff and having the three kids and all that. That's kind of made me stay here. And, well, you're a family man. I'm a family uh, man. Uh, that's good. That's good. So you just you go out just far enough so that you you know you can come back. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Or she doesn't have time to change the locks. So that's, 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 yeah. I, I like the way I like the way you said that. Well, you know, I, I'm very excited about uh, some opportunities that Southtown Comedy Club has got coming up, and uh, I'm really excited about the fact that you're going to be our first headliner for our first show out there at uh, Blue Star. Well, that, that's great. And don't forget, it's uh, uh, a very special night. It is uh, we are uh, doing a special uh, chair. It's uh, can openers for the needy. Um, we always give those poor people canned goods, but we don't know whether they can open them up. So we're going to give them can openers so they can actually eat the canned goods. So can can openers for the needy. I'm looking at you because I don't know if you're being serious or not, but that look on your face uh, is telling me that you are. That's well. That you know what? That that's you better no, be prepared. I'm, I'm not. Being you better stopped. be prepared. That's all I'm saying. You better take the can openers because I know my producer uh, isn't going to. Uh, Open up his wallet for that. We will. We will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We know that. Yeah. Uh, you got any other shows coming up uh, that you know of? That, uh... I'm, I'm a regular laugh out loud, and I'm also I do a, a River Center Comedy Club. Uh, awesome. I've awesome. been playing with the Oxymorons and Improv Troupe here in town. Yeah. We're on our 25th year. Uh, 25th year of uh, existence. So. That is just amazing. 25 years doing Oxymorons. Yeah, improv, pure improv, just not not stand up. It's just actual, just audience suggestions and. Make Making everything up on a spur of the moment. That's harder. That's way harder. Because uh, as a comedian, you get to go up and you've got your set prepared and you pretty much know what you're going to say. But when you're dealing with improv, anything goes. It's scary. Well, listen, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you out there on Thursday, folks. Thursday night, March 5th, 8.30 p.m. The doors open about uh, 7.30. You come out to uh, Southtown Comedy Club uh, there at the Blue Star Brewing Company. Now, you you might want to bring a few extra dollars. They've got their own beer that they brew there. And, uh, and Fabu- fabulous a, place. Joe, yeah. Joey has done a great job for years, and uh, it's wonderful to be able to go down there and play in that room again, too. Well, and he's looking forward to uh, as well because he he he'll stand back there. I've seen him stand back there and listen to the shows, and he'll 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 laugh for you know, and then he got to go take care of something, and then he'll come right back, and you know he pretends like he's not engaged in the show, but I know that he is. I can just look at him and tell. Well, we love we love that room because we know it from uh, the Cleto show. Uh, th- that's right. That's you know you and I. Uh, uh, we uh, work on the Cleto, Cleto Rodriguez, by the way, one of uh, the show's good friends, uh, was out there. So we're familiar with the place. He's familiar with us. He's looking forward. Well, Dave, I appreciate you coming out today. Hope you uh, uh, hope you have a good set on Thursday. Thanks. 
Folks, once again, let me remind you, you're listening to Southtown Comedy Radio. I'm your host, Roy Lopez Jr. And ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for our producer, R.Z. Rodriguez in the house. How's that? There you go. But uh, thank you, Richard. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next week. Southtown Comedy Club Radio. Roy Lopez Jr.